here's the big question. What happens during a lightning storm? Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Today we've got a real world setup to show you from one of our clients in logistic industry. So he needs to monitor a remote yard that's one kilometer away from the control room and not just that. He wants to deploy two IP cameras a wireless access point and also future proof the connection with fiber optic cabling. Now, why fiber optic? Well, there are a few good reasons that we are choosing fiber over traditional copper ethernet for this one kilometer remote link. So let's jump in. So copper ethernet has a max limit of 100 meters. Fiber easily handles up to 10 kilometers or more, especially with single mode. And fiber can support gigabit speeds with low latency, even at long distances. And remember, our client plans to expand later, so fiber gives us the bandwidth headroom to support additional devices. Now, let's take a look at the fiber optic cable that we're using today. This is a pre-made two-string single-mode fiber optic cable with LC connectors at both ends. Now it is rated for both indoor and outdoor use, so it's rugged enough for harsh environment and also flexible enough for clean indoor terminations. So now let's take our fiber optic cable to outdoor. Now for outdoor, Connectivity, we're using this beast, a pole-mounted four-port managed outdoor PoE switch with SFP uplinks. It has IP67 weatherproof and also IK10 vandal-resistant aluminum housing. It also has four PoE ports that support IEEE AO 2.3 AF and AT up to 30 watts per port one dedicated RJ45 uplink port, and two SFP slots, and also dual DC power input for redundancy. So this piece allows us to connect our two cameras and wireless access point, all powered over Ethernet and uplink via fiber. So now I'm going to put my fiber optic cable through here. Since we have two string, make sure you know which string that you're using. Let's use string C here. First, I'll need to slide in my SFP transceiver into the SFP slot. Now this is string C. Let's connect it. So now we are getting the data. We have two cameras and one SS point. So I'm going to connect three ethernet cables here one for the SS point and two for cameras so now it is all set let's check out our cameras now you can see they're getting both power and data using power over ethernet so just one cable needed so now our outdoor connectivity is done so now we're at the control room. Here we've got our 16 plus 8 managed Ethernet switch. That means 8 Ethernet port and 16 SFP port. Great for hybrid setup. And now I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the router to the switch to provide data. And other short patch cord from the switch to the network video recorder so we can display video footage on our big screen monitor. And now it's our turn to plug in the fiber optic cable. Remember, we used string C, so we just have to put string C. And you might wonder why we only need one string of fiber optic cable, not two, because we're using a BD SFP transceiver. BD stands for bidirectional, and this use WDM, wavelength division multiplexing, to transmit and receive data over a single fiber string. It used two different light wavelengths, so halves our fiber usage, so we only need one string for full communication. Super efficient. Now, string C to the SFP transceiver. And instantly, we can see our video feed is displaying on our monitor. I'm going to wave my hand 
So you can see this is a live video. So now our camera system is live and connectivity across the fiber link is seamless. But here's the big question. What happens during a lightning storm? So fiber itself doesn't conduct electricity, which is great for outdoor, but our outdoor switches and equipment still carry power and indirect lightning searches can fry your setup. So that's why we're introducing you to our new outdoor termination box. Now the fiber optic cable is already connected inside the box. We have a surge protector. Now this absorb excess voltage from power surges, then ground it safely. Next to our surge protector, we have a circuit breaker. It automatically shuts off in case of overload. In the back, we have the LC coupler for fiber connection. Now the two-string fiber of the cable is already connected to the LC coupler. And now I'm going to plug in a fiber patch cord. So the fiber patch cord and the power cable will go directly to our outdoor PoE switch. Now let's slide in our SFP transceiver and plug in the fiber patch cord. Then I'm going to turn on our circuit breaker so the power will go directly to the outdoor PoE switch. Now this way, any unexpected spike in power, like from a nearby lightning strike, is diverted away from your critical equipment. So now we are receiving the power. Let's take a look at our bullet cameras. So now they're getting both power and data. So now with both IP cameras and wireless access point on the same network, there's a potential risk, especially if someone connects to the access point and tries to reach your camera's feed. So to fix that, we implement VLANs or virtual local area networks. A VLAN allows us to logically separate devices on the same physical switch. For example, we can put the IP cameras on VLAN 10 and the AP on VLAN 20, and this means even though they are connected to the same switch, they cannot talk to each other unless we allow it. So this adds a layer of security, prevent unauthorized access to sensitive video feeds, and keeps your network organized and scalable. Now, this setup not only solves our clients' needs today, but also prepares them for future expansion thanks to the high bandwidth and long distance capability of fiber optic. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more real world network builds and tech tips. And if you get a project like this one coming up, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section below. We're always here to help. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you in our next video.